Here's a, here's a little video uh, going over some details on a micro scale solar generator system. What would be the bare minimum? A solar generator is usually going to involve obviously some solar panels, some battery storage, and then some kind of a charge regulator. And in this case, devices which will help you transfer power from device to device. And, and of course, a few standalone devices to have basic uh, off grid living standards such as light, communication, and um, you know maybe, maybe a little entertainment value or something like that record keeping value with your uh, smartphone uh, all of this is engineered to work with what's called USB power which is 5.5 volts and of course these little these little four element plugs uh, you know single it's a polarized little four element plug inside the uh, the systems on these not incredibly stable power coming off of the solar panels Although that depends a little bit on the, the make, model, brand, and quality of foldable solar array that you have. This one came from Thunderbolt Solar at Harbor Freight. Not exactly high-end, right? So what happens is I have to look out to make sure that when I plug stuff into the USB power here, this is USB out, output for the solar panel, that it's relatively tolerant of variances in voltage. And so what I found is I've got to experiment with this stuff. Okay, um, I, iPhone, iPad, iPod type stuff doesn't seem to like this, doesn't seem to work with it very well, it's very sensitive, you know, the voltage is too high or too low when you're trying to charge an Apple device, it, it just simply won't accept the charge, and it cuts it out. So if you are going to charge an Apple device with one of these, you've got to have something else in between to regulate the power. In this case, I use one of these little Rayovac uh, charging devices. It's actually got a lithium-ion battery built into it. So what happens is the USB will, will charge this up. You've got, you've got a little ticker here that you, you set that for whichever plug you're using. You can't do it simultaneously for some reason. Um, but you, you set it for charging this device up, and then this, you, you put that little switch in the other direction, you plug it into an Apple device, and then it will charge the Apple device. Obviously, it doesn't facilitate any sort of memory or data transfer. So let's say you're trying to maintain a little bit better operational security, and you, you don't want to accidentally try charging your smartphone or your iPod at a location where it might give away its lo uh, location or automatically start uploading, downloading from the Internet. You just want it to have power, good, good little device to have for that. The other way to regulate the power is to put it through another little charger box. This one does not use a lithium ion battery per se. It's got slots for a couple of AA batteries. I personally haven't had the best of luck with this thing, but it does most of what it's supposed to do, and it does help charge AA batteries. You've got little indicator lights on there. Um, it, you can unplug everything, and it works as a little standalone battery holder, I guess. And so it's basically we've got an input jack and an output jack for USB. So it can help to regulate power to yet another device. And if you've got good strong sunlight, you, you can actually plug one battery charger into the other and then get all your batteries up. It's just not all that good for it. You really just want to do one pair of batteries at a time. This is an Energizer um, uh, USB thing. And believe it or not, when you plug this into a computer, the computer tries to recognize it as a device, not just simply a little battery power holder. So... There's a little bit of a complex processor in here that will detect different types of batteries. It will do both AA and AAA with this little flip down adapter. It does two at a time. It has a little self sewing thing for its plug which is built on. And uh, remarkably complex. But I've, uh, some of these rechargeable batteries here I think were nickel metal hydride and it seems to work with those. The other thing of course would be your standalone flashlight. This one's really cool. It's a, a Blackburn bicycle headlight that also acts as a flashlight with its own USB adapter for uh, recharging which has no penetrating plug to it. These, these plugs are basically an external um, surface contact onto the terminals here. So this thing maintains its water watertight seal when you go to recharge it. And, and so you don't take that apart. You know, it doesn't come apart. The batteries are built in and they stay in. They, uh, there's also a Blackburn um, the bicycle taillight, little red winker light that uses this little USB device. I, I didn't bring it with me. 
So the other option, of course, for your battery storage will be to have AA and AAA batteries, which are compatible with these things. And then with the AA, AAA batteries, what you're going to be able to do is keep a lot of other devices going, uh, small two-way radios, cameras like this one that are set up to take AA batteries. And then, of course, with various plug adapters, you could also keep other electronic devices and smartphones and GPSs and things like that going off of your solar panel. Is this something to use long term, full term at a survival retreat? You know, maybe, maybe not. It's mainly going to be set up for lightweight, high speed, low drag travel. And for international travel, the reason I would recommend this is it's not very expensive. You're looking at about 40 bucks for the solar panel. 20 30 40 bucks for these other devices flashlights a little more expensive than average 80 bucks but remember it's fully rechargeable you're not buying any batteries again so if you're dealing with those so-called tactical flashlights that take the cr123 batteries hey good luck buying those overseas okay it's a hassle and uh you're talking about you know the equivalent to third world day's wages just for a set of batteries this is rechargeable you're not going to be making an ass of yourself in front of a bunch of people by going and spending crazy money on batteries because you want to be a special tactical person. The other thing is, none of this is so incredibly expensive that it should majorly break your heart if you simply leave it in country when you fly home. Okay, If uh, I go someplace and I were to uh, gift this to somebody, I may be winning goodwill forever. If I uh, find something that's more valuable to come home with me in a luggage by weight, then I, I, I'm just going to swap it off, okay? Uh, it's useful in a bush. It's useful when you're traveling. Probably not all that useful at home. USB power is so minimally expensive that it, it's just, you know, it's not worth going solar specifically if you have grid power available to do it. But the cool thing here is that a lot of your USB devices are relatively standardized and there's a lot of places now where they even have USB on wall outlets. So the system does not necessarily have to be solar, it, it can simply recharge off of other things like computers and wall outlets. Even some vehicles now have USB outlets. I, I know a lot of Kia vehicles now have that. So with an integrated USB based system you can do that in your Road Warrior laptop bag and then add a solar panel and you'll know that at least the peripheral devices will stay going if there's no power.